Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we'll be looking at the Akko XTTC Demon Switches. And for transparency, Akko did send these out for review, but I will not influence my opinion in any way, and I did not see any part of this review before it went live. Akko switches are known for their packaging, and these switches are no different. Even though they are sold in packs of 10, they come in small little boxes that have a plastic tray inside that has the switches. It's really nice packaging, but is very extra, and does seem pretty wasteful from an environmental viewpoint. So these are linear switches, 3 pin, with a 50 gram actuation force and 63.5 gram bottom mount gold plated spring. The website doesn't specify which materials are used in the switch, and I don't think I'm experienced enough to try and guess the materials. They are purple, which look really nice, the bottom housing is a super dark grape color, the top housing looks very similar in shade to lavender purple, and a bluish purple blurple stem, which kind of looks like an otamu or kale box style stem. Unlike the CS switches, the demons don't use a kale style housing, so a standard Cherry MX opener would work fine. If you think that these switches are too heavy, or don't like the colorway, then they also offer the princess switches, which come with a 45 gram actuation force and 53.5 bottom out spring, and are pink and still linear if you prefer that colorway. These switches do come with a very light amount of factory oil on the legs, center post, and spring, and it makes for a decently smooth stock switch. One of my favorite parts of the switches is the very minimal stem wobble, and I think it's from the dustproof stem, but I could be wrong. You can't film these switches, so the lack of stem wobble is appreciated. There isn't any spring noise or ping, but the bottom out is a little harsh. I lubed these 205 grade 0 on the stem and 105 on the springs. It does soften the bottom out, which I prefer, and improves the smoothness and acoustics of the switches. Compared to stock radiant reds, the demons are smoother stock and have a much softer bottom out, as well as no noticeable spring noise, which the radiants have quite a lot of. Compared to Lube Bros Reds, the demons aren't as smooth stock, but are smoother once lubed. Same thing with Gator on Yellows. Compared to Lubed Alpacas, they aren't as smooth stock or lubed, which is interesting given that the demons are more expensive, but more on that later. So everything seems to be pretty well so far, but now it's time to talk about the light diffuser. It does serve its purpose, evenly distributing light better than a standard SMD switch would, but it also comes with a major drawback, being the interference. Now, the reason why south facing PCBs are so popular among enthusiasts is that they don't have interference with cherry profile keycaps and switches. But that isn't the case here. Having these switches in north facing configuration with cherry profile, I found interference with R3 pretty standard, but in south facing, R2, R3, R4, and the bottom row have switch interference. Testing with other keycap profiles, I found that OEM, DSA and SA don't have any interference, but Akko's own ASA keycaps have interference, but only on the F and J keys. Nitpicky, I know, but it's there. You can remove this diffuser if you want, but you have to trade light diffusion for no interference, which for me, is a pretty easy trade. Now the price. I wanted to specifically save this until the end because I found it to be very surprising. These switches sell for a price of 70 cents a switch, at $7 for a pack of 10. While they do perform really well and are really smooth, in my opinion, I believe that this is too high. It's higher than a JWK Linear, higher than any gas use switch, higher than Novel Key Creams. I feel like it's overpriced for what it's worth, especially with the interference issues. I just can't recommend these switches over a standard JWK Linear, especially since those come in at just 55 cents a switch and like I mentioned before, are smoother than these switches after both being lubed with 205. 
I want to commend Akko for trying to do something different. They tried to make a switch that wasn't in line with what they were commonly associated with, but with the high price and interference issues, I know Akko will be watching this once this review goes live, but I can't recommend these switches. My best advice is to only buy these if you really like the colorway, or you're planning them to use with backlit keycaps, because otherwise the only purpose the diffuser serves is to ruin your experience with cherry profile keycaps. If this review might have come off as a little harsh, it is, but that's only because I expected so much more from these switches given the 70 cent switch price. These are currently the most expensive switches I own, but I definitely won't be using these anytime soon. I'll leave links to the switches in the description if you still want to try it out. If you enjoyed this review, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.